we're going to look at a new topic um, related to correlation and regression, but it's it's um, something different. It's sometimes a little bit challenging for students to get a hold of, but if you just follow these steps, I think that you'll be fine. We've shown that there's a positive linear correlation between the average length of schooling and life expectancy of a country's population. But there are also other factors that influence the life expectancy that exist outside of our data. So we have a pie chart here where average length of schooling has an influence on life expectancy, but there are also other factors. Now, some of those other factors could be uh, geographic, could be political. Um, some of those countries uh, definitely had periods of war. So um, some of those countries' life expectancy could have been impacted by war. So there are ge generally other, definitely other factors that can play in influences on life expectancy. The degree, or how much, influence that one variable has on another variable, in this case, the degree of influence that schooling has on life expectancy is a number, and that could be found with a number called the coefficient of determination. Okay. We can arrive at a numerical value that is a, a measure of influence that, w that the x variable has on the y variable. So in other words, how much of an influence does the average length of schooling have on life expectancy? Given all the other factors that exist, how much of an influence does average schooling have on life expectancy? The answer to this question will be a percentage and visually it's shown in the pie chart as the blue section. The coefficient of determination measures how much x, which in this case is the average length of schooling, influences the variation in y, the life expectancy. So how much does x influence y is the coefficient of determination. We find the coefficient of determination by squaring the correlation coefficient r. So the coefficient of determination is simply r squared. You may have noticed r squared come out on your calculator when you run lin reg. So press stat, go over to calc, go down to number 4, leave everything as it was set before, it's fine calculate it. Okay, A was used in the equation, B was used in the equation, R was used to measure the strength of the correlation between the two variables X and Y, and R squared is the correlation, uh, I'm sorry, the coefficient of determination, basically the square of the correlation coefficient. So if we were to square 0.757995846, we square this number, we will get 0 0.57455703062. Okay, so in our last example, R came out to be 0.76. So therefore, if you know that the correlation coefficient is 0.76, you can easily find the coefficient of determination by squaring it. So you just simply take 0.76 and square it, and your co co uh, coefficient of determination is 0.58. So in a particular problem, let's quit that screen. In a particular problem, if you're not being provided with the raw data, if you're just simply being provided with a correlation coefficient, for example, 0.76, and you were asked to find the coefficient of determination, all you have to do is square it. So here's that squared key. It's um, above the log key, below the x to the negative 1 key. x squared and when you round this to two decimal places, you get 0.58, or which is 
Now be careful because sometimes the correlation coefficient is negative. So if it's negative, make sure that you square the negative as well. So perhaps our correlation coefficient came out to be negative 0.84. If we were to square that, you get a positive 0.71. So just make sure that when you when you square the correlation coefficient, you also square the sign because the coefficient of determination, the square, should always be positive. Say, so, okay, it represents a piece of the pie chart in this particular example. I showed you through a pie chart, and it represents a positive piece of area, a positive percentage. So, if we were provided simply with 0.76 as the correlation coefficient, if we square it, we can arrive at 0.58, the coefficient of determination. A more precise coefficient of determination could be found by using the LINREG feature on our calculator. Okay, so in this case, it comes out to be 0.57 because the, the third location is a 4, 0 0.57, it's a little bit more precise because we, we didn't work from the rounded value for R. It depends on the problem that's at hand. If the problem provides you with a value for R, the best you can do to find the coefficient of determination is to square that value of R. Okay, so in, if we were just simply provided with 0.76 and we were to square it, then R squared would come out to be 0.58. And if we multiply that by 100, we would have the percentage, which would be 58%. And this is how we're going to interpret the meaning of the coefficient of determination. We're going to say blank percent of the variation in whatever the dependent variable Y is, is influenced by, and then we'll put the name of the independent variable x. So for this example, the coefficient of determination came out to be 58%, so we're going to put 58% right here. The dependent variable y was the average life expectancy of a country. That was the name of the variable, and we're going to place that right here. And the independent variable x for this example was the average length of schooling. So we're going to place that here. So filling out the blanks, we have 58% of the variation in a country's life expectancy is influenced by the average length of schooling. So again, coefficient of determination as expressed as a percent. The, the dependent variable y, which is life expectancy, and the independent variable x, which is average length of schooling. So when asked for an interpretation of the coefficient of determination, this is basically the format that I would be looking for. Okay, so the coefficient of determination when we got r squared equals 58 suggests that there are some other influences on life expectancy. Since the coefficient of determination is 58, we may conclude that the remaining 42%, how do we get 42? Well, you just take 100 minus 58 and you get 42%. The remaining 42% of variability is due to other unexplained factors. The unexplained amount is outside of the scope of this problem, and we could just accept that there are other factors that contribute to the variable life expectancy. So when we, when we come up with an interpretation for the coefficient of determination, we may also want to account for the remaining percentage that's due to unexplained factors. The correlation coefficient for two variables, x and y, let's assume that x represents handgun ownership and y represents homicide rate, is r equal 0.70. Okay, so you are provided with the variable for x, which is the independent variable, handgun ownership, and you're provided with the variable for y, the, independ the um, dependent variable, homicide rate. 
and you're given the correlation coefficient r at 0.70. Find the, uh, find the coefficient of determination and interpret its meaning. So to find the coefficient of determination, you are simply going to square 0.70. Squaring 0.70, you get r squared equals 0.49. Expressed as a percent, this is 49%. Okay, to interpret this, we're going to use the same structure as we did in the previous example. We're going to state the percentage, 49% of the variation in. Then we're going to put the y variable, the dependent variable, homicide rate, is influenced by, and then we're going to put the x variable, which is the independent variable, handgun ownership. 49% of the variation in homicide rate is influenced by handgun ownership. The remaining 51% of variability is due to other unexplained factors out of the scope of this problem. Okay, a note of caution regarding the interpretation of correlation results. Two variables may have a significant linear relationship, but it doesn't imply a cause and effect relationship. So in other words, the presence of one variable doesn't necessarily cause the presence of the other variable. For example, the number of storks nesting in various European towns in the early 1900s and the number of human babies born in the same towns during this period have a very high correlation. So we have lots of storks and lots of babies. So we can even, we can even measure the correlation and we can see that there may be a positive correlation and the points of a scatter diagram would move upward from left to right. Um, that would indicate that there's a very high correlation. But does it really mean that more storks cause more babies? Is there a cause and effect relationship? And it should be obvious that the answer to that is no. Storks don't cause babies. So we can't conclude that an increase of, in storks will increase in babies or vice versa. So storks won't cause an increase in babies, and decrease in storks won't cause a decrease in babies. And babies won't increase in, uh, increase in babies won't increase the number of storks and so forth. So a significant linear correlation should not be interpreted to mean that a change in one variable caused the change in the other variable. Okay, so we are simply showing that we have a presence of one variable with the presence of another variable, but it doesn't necessarily mean that one causes the other. And it ha we have to be careful there. Correlation is only the first step in, in proving a cause and effect relationship. Okay, there's many other statistical tests and, and other kinds of mathematical analysis that need to occur before you can prove a cause and effect relationship. A correlation is simply that two things are correlated with each other. Okay, so changes in one variable are accompanied by changes in the other variable, but not caused by changes in the other variable.